Hello everyone, welcome to this session where we are going to discuss the physics analysis of NEET test 66. I have regarded 19 questions as easy, 23 as medium and 3 are tough. And for the 3 question 26, I say the answer is wrong. 27, the language is unclear of SHM, it is not making out what is the amplitude. And similarly, there is issue in question number 39 as well. The answer, it is the second time the question is giving and not agreeing to the solution they have given. Otherwise, it's not that tough, but it's not that easy paper also. It's a mix of paper. I can, can't comment like it's looking like to be that easy, but I don't feel it would be that easy for each and every student. So here for an average student, I say 130 or even greater would be very well. And for a good student, it should be 160 plus. But yes, this paper might stump someone though I have rated it looking like easy but it might stump someone so let's see what is in the paper so let's start so the first question the ratio of the kinetic and the total energy of the electron in the nth quantum state of the Bohr atomic model we know here like the satellite what we say total energy is negative of kinetic energy that is u by 2 so the ratio of the kinetic and the total would be minus 1 that you know kinetic is positive total is negative magnitude is same next the difference of 2.3 EV separates two energy levels in an atom. The frequency of radiation emitted when the electron makes a transition. So you can directly say that delta E would be equal to H nu. So the frequency nu would be delta E that is 2.3 EV and H you know is 4.14 into 10 to the power minus 15 EV seconds. So it is 2.3 upon 4.14 into 10 to the power 15 hertz. So if you do this, if I do this, 10 to the power 14, 23 upon 4.14. So this would be 5 point something. So it's most appropriate is 5.6 into 10 to the power 14. Let me write it 10 to the power 14 hertz. So go for option C. Again, an easy one. Next. Two boys of 10 kg and 8 kg masses moving along a vertical rope, the former climbing up with an acceleration 2 while the later climbing down with a uniform velocity of 2. Okay. The tension in the rope at the fixed support is okay so the two boys are moving along a what we say along a vertical rope the former climbing up with an acceleration so this is climbing up okay and the other one is going down with some constant speed this is something like that so let's say this one is climbing down with a constant speed this is going down with a speed of 2 meter per second this is going up with an acceleration 2 meter per second square that is what is given so now we know a person can hold the rope because of the uh, friction force so for for this person if i draw the fbd so for this person person we can say the fbd is this friction let's say call it uh, b call it a so friction of b is equal to mbg because it is balanced so friction on B is equal to mbg, mbg means that is equal to 80 newtons, okay. And in the second one, for the second one we say again it is going up, so friction must be up, fa, and this is mag, it is going above, so fa minus mag must be equals to what I can say is equal to ma into a. So what it is fa, ma is 10 into 10 plus 2 now, it is 12, that is 120 newton that is what we can write now for the equilibrium of the rope now if you see the rope both the friction acts down this is acting down this is acting down so that must be supported by the tension or the fixed support forces so that fb and fa both must be balanced by tension and tension must be equals to 120 plus 80 that is equals to 200 newton for this particular case so it's a very interesting question and it's not that easily asked question now next one the coordinates of the cm of the three particles of one two three milligrams okay are two 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 okay the coordinates of the fourth particle of mass 4 mg to be positioned so the cm of the fourth particles is at the origin of the coordinate system okay so what we will have three are placed like here there so we can treat them as a single particle of 6 mg this is just 2 2 2 2 the second one is 4 mg from common sense i can let's say say it to be ddd because then also we can have only for zero so for cm to be zero what we can have let's say for xcm that would be 
6 into 2 plus 4 into d upon 6 plus 4 that is 10 should be 0 so d comes out as minus 12 by 4 which comes out as minus 3 so it should be minus 3 minus 3 minus 3 that I can directly say so it's an easy one next a 500 kg car takes a round turn of radius 50 meter with a velocity of 36 kmph the centripetal forces so you know what is the centripetal force that is equal to mv square by r mass is 500 kg v square 36 36 is 10 meter per second you know if you convert it so that is 100 upon 50 so that is 10 that's come out as 1000 newton so 1000 we will take next going on for the sixth one what we have now again what would be the maximum speed of a car on a road turn of 30 meter if the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road is 0.4 so what do you say uh, when it is making a turn that fs must be equals to mv square by r provides a necessary force that should be less than or equal to mu sn and which is mu s mg you write so mv square by r should be like that so what do you need maximum speed so v square should be less than or equal to mu s gr you get so what we have 0.4 into 10 into 30 that is 30 300 into 0.4 that is 120 so v should be less than or equal to root of 120 root of 120 is approximately 11 close to 11 so 10.84 meter per second i can go for next one mobility of free electron in a conductor is directly proportional to electron density directly proportional to relaxation time inversely proportional to electron density inversely proportional to relaxation time so if you remember that mobility you directly know that mobility we defined it as vd by e and vd comes out as e e by m times tau divided by e so it is e by m into tau so mu is directly proportional to tau tau is the relaxation time so you can go for option b next three resistances of four ohm each are connected as shown in figure if the point d divides the resistance into two equal halves okay the relation between a and d will be the resistance between a and d sorry so this four and two are in series this four and two are in series so that is six and six and they will be in parallel so directly that is going to be three ohms next transformer has 100 turns in the primary carries 8 current if input power is 1 kilowatt the number of turns in secondary coil to have 500 volts of output will be okay so it has 100 turns and carries 8 ampere current if the input power is 1 kilowatt the number of turns in secondary coil to have 500 watt of output so what we assume it to be 100 percent efficient so p primary is p secondary so that is 1000 watt would be equals to what we have number of turns to have 500 volt okay so what I can directly say first of all uh, the primary voltage I can say P primary would be IP into VP so what we have 1000 is equal to 8 into VP so VP comes out as 1000 by 8 which comes out as 125 so it is 125 to 500 so what I can say VP upon VS is NP upon NS that is 100 upon NS so VP is 125 this is 500 this is 100 upon NS so directly solve it this is what we can say 1 by 4 so ns comes out as 400 you can directly go for option c next one the inductance of solenoid of mean diameter 1 centimeter 1 meter long wound on a with 1000 turns of copper wire okay you have to find the inductance so inductance you know the formula for here is comes out to be mu naught n square a by l or you can write mu naught small n square a by l whatever you wish so mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 n square so 1000 turns of copper wire that is 1000 square area is pi into d square by 4 so 10 to the power minus 4 by 4 i can write into length is 1 so this 4 and 4 goes so this is pi square into this will become 10 to the power 6 and this is if i do this will all become 10 to the power minus 5 so pi square into 10 to the power minus 5 you can write it as pi square approximately as 10 that is 10 to the power minus 4 henry so the closest option is 0.1 milli henry i can go for next electron dipole is fixed at the origin of coordinates its movement is directed in the positive x okay positive charge is moved from r comma 0 to point r minus r comma 0 the work done by the agent is so what we have dipole is directed along positive x like like this this is p now what we have 
we have a point initially at r comma 0 and now it moves to minus r comma 0 let's say from a to b so what i can say the potential at this point due to dipole that you can say is uh, because it is from negative to positive it is what we say plus kp by r square and here because it is on the opposite side it would be minus kp by r square because now it would be closer to the negative one so it has a negative potential so work done by the agent w external would be equals to q delta v so that is q v b minus v a so that comes out as what we'll have minus 2 k q p by r square so that is negative and is inversely proportional to r square you can go for that now next one for the following electric field lines electric field is because you are saying it is not a straight line so it is going to not be a uniform so both uniform non-uniform not possible can't be said it would be non-uniform because direction you can directly say is changing so direction is changing so it is non-uniform so it's an easy one next two bodies of masses m and 4m are placed at a distance r the gravitational potential at a point on the line joining them where the gravitational field is zero this is a question that has been asked before in examination so what we have this is m this is 4m they are placed at a separation of r okay the gravitational potential at a point on the line joining them where the gravitational field is zero so you can clearly make out gravitational field will be zero only in between the two and it would be closer to this one so let's say this is the point p so let this distance be x this will become r minus x so for field to be zero the magnitude of both must be same so gm by x square should be equal to g into 4m upon r minus x ka whole square so what we have taking the root directly we have 1 upon x is 2 upon r minus x i am not taking plus minus because i know r is going to uh, x is going to be less than r so r minus x is equal to 2x so x comes out as r by 3 so now we have to find the potential so potential at p is first due to m is minus gm upon x which is r by 3 and minus g 4m remaining distance would be 2 r by 3 so if you do this minus 3 gm by r and this comes out as if you do 4 3 12 by 2 6 6 gm by r so it comes out as minus 9 gm by r go for option b that is the answer next the semi-major axis of the orbit of Saturn is approximately 9 times of the Earth. The time period of we know t square is proportional to a cube. So if it is 9 times, so t is proportional to a to the power 3 by 2. That is 9 to the power 3 by 2. So that will definitely be what will have 9 to the power 3 by 2 will give me 9 3 square. Uh, you can write so it is 3 cube. That is 27 times. So 27 years. So its year would be 27 times the years of the Earth. Next two identical square rods of metal are welded end to end okay in figure one so in figure one you can directly say they are one after another that is they are in series 20 calorie of heat flows through it okay in four minutes that is if the rods are welded as shown in the figure two here they will be in parallel you can make out the same amount of heat will flow through the rods is. so what we can say here because they are identical this is r and r in series so this was 2r equivalent here they are in parallel that is r by 2 that means resistance has become 1 by 4 so current will become 4 times so time taken will become 1 by 4 times so it will go in 1 minute because the reheat will flow at 4 times faster rate so it will take 1 4 time lesser next one for a gas r by cv is 0.4 that means cv is r upon 0.4 or you can say cv is 5r by 2 okay and the cv is the molar specific heat the gas is made of molecules you know this is for diatomic molecules directly you know and that is for rigid diatomic not the non-rigid for the non-rigid diatomic you can have 7 r by 2 so we'll go for option a now the next one a monoatomic gas expands at constant pressure on heating the percentage of heat supplied that increases the internal energy so what we can say at constant pressure q is ncp delta t and delta u is equal to ncv delta t so the percentage of heat supplied goes to internal energy of the gas that would be delta u by q you can write it as cv by cp and it is a monoatomic gas it is 1 by gamma for a mono gas gamma is 5 by 3 so it comes out as 3 by 5 or you can say 60 percent so 60 percent goes in increasing internal energy and remaining 40 percent will be utilized in doing work so go for option c next a wire is parallel to a square coil the coil and wire carry currents in the direction shown 
then at any point here within the coil the magnetic field will be okay so first of all uh, due to this uh, uh, current due to the coil itself we can make it out the field would be inwards uh, we'll write like that and due to this wire is also inwards so what we'll have within the coil the magnetic field will be less than the magnetic field produced due to coil no it would be more than the magnetic field produced due to coil because both are adding up so it would be option b that is the appropriate one next one two long parallel wires are at a distance 2d apart they carry steady equal currents flowing out of the plane of the paper as shown so like this it is going coming towards me this is also coming towards me okay they are at a separation 2d the variation of the field along the line is so first of all what we can say if we look at a point like this because of the both it would be upwards it would be upwards so i will draw like and as the distance increases and first of all let me divide into three parts here both will be upwards so it would be like this similarly here also the both will be downwards if you make from your analysis it would be downwards now at the midpoint you can say due to this wire the field is upward due to this wire it is downward so it would be zero and uh, before this this wire will dominate and it is having upward so it will go like this closer to it would be very large and it would go like this so as per the options i can see clearly the first one is the most appropriate one this is again you must have done such question before next the net magnetic moment of two identical magnets each of magnetic moment m not inclined at 60 degree with respect to each other is because both are like this this is m1 this is m2 both are at 60 degree we say it is a vector quantity so the net directly i can say because of the two equal vector i can write it to be 2m cos of 60 by 2 or you can do root do, do, do that a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta under root so that would be 2m cos 30 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 so it is root 3m or root 3m not whatever you want to wish next blind person after walking 10 steps in one direction each of length 80 centimeter turns randomly to the left or right by 90 degree okay after walking a total of 40 steps the maximum displacement of the person from its starting point will be okay so let's assume and the person first goes 10 steps and then let's say turns here 10 steps and because we are searching for the maximum displacement i'll make him turn like this and here also i will make him turn like this so this is like this so this is 10 steps 10 steps of 80 centimeter means 8 meter 8 meter 8 meter 8 meter so this could be the maximum possible displacement and if i join this it would be a straight line and i like let's say using some basic geometry it would be 16 plus 16 so 16 root 2 i can directly make it out so it is going to be 16 root 2 meter is the maximum possible displacement if in this particular fashion next so it was a good one a particle is projected from the ground with an initial speed of v at an angle theta the average velocity of the particle between its point of projection and the highest point of trajectory okay so the average velocity between these two points this is the highest and this one so what i can say first of all displacement between these two points is r by 2 i cap plus h j cap in our normal notation x and y and r by 2 what i can write it as that was 2ux ui by g or let's say u square sine 2 theta so u square sine 2 theta by 2g that would be the, the thing and h is u square sine square theta by 2g j cap and the time taken delta t delta t would be t by 2 t by 2 you know is u sine theta by g so what we will have average velocity definition we say is delta r by delta t so what we'll have if you do this so u square sine 2 theta if i write it as 2 u square sine theta cos theta by g so 2 2 will cancel that would be u square sine theta cos theta by g divided by u sine theta by g i cap plus if you divide this by u sine theta by g let's say let, let me write completely divided by u sine theta by g j cap so this u and u goes sine theta sine theta goes g g goes so what we have u cos theta i cap that i can directly write that was the velocity for x and similarly for y i can directly write u sin theta by 2 if you do this so we should have done directly also i have done this long way because this velocity is constant this was linearly varying so we can take the average but we have done it so i can't help i have done in a longer way 
no issues so the average velocity is magnitude will now come out to be u common it would be cos square plus sin square theta by 4 so if I do, do this this would be let's say u by 2 I take common this will come out as 4 cos square theta plus sin square theta so that would be 1 plus 3 cos square theta I can directly write so go for option C we should have directly gone for it I have done it in a longer way no issues next the acceleration of kg block in the arrangement shown in the diagram when the given in system is released from rest so look at it this is 1 5 and 3 so what I can say this is let's say this tension be t this be t this would be 2t so I can make out 2t will be less than 30 for sure because it cannot go up so the maximum tension that we can have is 30 or 15 here in for t could be 15 I, I can say 2t could be 30 so t could be 15 what I can say now this to move f max is equal to 0 0.8 into 50 so that requirement cannot be suffice that means this will be at rest so now we have these two blocks and if it goes by acceleration a definitely its acceleration is going to be a by 2 because it will has to supply the double the string because if it goes by 1 meter the pulley will only shift by 0.5 meter because 0.5 will go here 0.5 will go here okay so this is the constraint relation that we have got so now using this applying on this what we have 30 minus 2t is equal to 3 times a by 2 and for that t is equal to a 1 into a directly you can write so this letting it be divided multiplied by 2 so we have 30 is equal to 2 plus 3 by 2 that is 3.5a so a comes out as 30 upon 3.5 we have to find the acceleration of 3 kg so 3 kg 1 would be half of this that would be 15 upon 3.5 you can say 150 by 35 and if you do this, this is 30 by 7 so 30 by 7 is 4 point something so it will be 4.3 meter per second square that would be the answer so it's a good question for you next consider a car going on a straight road with a speed of 100 the distance at which car can be stopped so because of the friction you can say the maximum retardation that can be generated would be mu g magnitude I am directly writing I know it would be retardation that is 5 meter per second square so directly you know stopping distance using third equation final speed becomes 0 initial is v naught it comes out as v naught square by 2 mu kg that is 100 into 100 upon 2 into this 5 thing 10 so that is 1000 meters so it can't be stopped before 1000 meter for the given parameters so go for option C next one if 10% of a radioactive substance decays in 5 years then the percentage that would have decayed in 20 years so again I have told you 10% decays is that means after 10 years remaining would be if it was in naught it would be 0 0.9 and naught so I have told you again and again if this is in 5 years 20 is 4 times so after sorry this is 5 years not 10 years so after 20 years that is 4 times this it would be 0 0.9 to the power 4 times and naught this is I have told you this is the power of exponentials so the remaining amount would be 0 0.9 to the power 4 and naught which is what you can say 0 0.81 into 0 0.81 I can write into a naught so 81 ones are or you can say 11 88 64 64 and 64 you had 168 16 and now we have 8 and 16 and 8 that is 16 and 8 what we can write 2481 so it is going to be 0.2481 or 3481 let me check again let me calculate it again I might have done some mistake let me multiply it again 81 ones are 81 81 eights are if I do 810 and which we have 162 if I take out this would be what we have 700 650 so 648 plus 8 656 I can make out so 656.165.61 or 0.65 percent I can say directly say it will be remaining it will be remaining so the percentage that would have decayed that would be 34.4 percent this would be remaining and that would have been decayed okay next so do the calculation like this the half life of a radioactive element x is same as the mean lifetime of another element y initially they have the same number of atoms so what it says let's say these are the two curves we know simply this is t half t half n naught becomes n naught by 2 and for tau it becomes 0 0.37 n naught or n naught by e what you can say so the x becomes 37 percent while y becomes only 50 percent sorry 
x is half life uh, wait a minute wait a minute half life i'm ah uh, yeah so x is half life so x decays by 50% but the y in the same interval decays by approximately 63% that means y is decaying faster so that means definitely y will decay faster than x so what op option we can say uh, we can say it is y will decay faster than so x. here nta has given a wrong answer y will decay faster than x i'm pretty sure about that next 27th a particle of mass 1 kg is moving in shm with a path length of this and frequency of 50 hertz the maximum force in newton acting on the particle is going to be that is what we can with a path length of 0.01 meters okay now this is a dubious thing what do we take is this path length to be so what is this path length now this is a very dubious terms they have used so and frequency is given you know the f max is equal to m omega square a and that would be equal to m omega omega is 2 pi f whole square into a so m is clear one 2 pi f will become 100 pi whole square into amplitude so this become 10 to the power 4 pi square okay now what about amplitude this is 0.01 meter this is the path length now path length could be 2a path length could be could be 4a also so i'm taking the path length to be 2a and amplitude to be 0.005 in that case so what it becomes now so it becomes 10 to the power 3 will go and 5 into 10 that i can go for 50 pi square if that case and the answer they have given is 100 pi square so this path length they have taken to be amplitude i don't know what to take for me it should be 50 pi square they have given it 100 pi square so i'm not marking anything because it is a dubious term what to say for this path length ideally it should fit as would have been amplitude it would be even more, more easy so it depends what you interpret next a particle of mass m is moving along the x axis under the potential this where k and x dash are positive constant of appropriate dimensions the particle is slightly displaced from its equilibrium position the particle oscillates with the angular frequency omega given by okay these are positive constant of appropriate dimension the particle is slightly displaced from its equilibrium position and then given so what we can say you can say u here is given as half k x square plus some constant let's say u not so it doesn't matter that so basically energy that is varying is half k x square so i can directly say this would this would be the normal shm function and this k would be equal to m omega square so omega would be equal to root of k by m i can directly go for that because that constant term won't do anything otherwise the best thing would be differentiate f is minus du by dx and again you will get it as minus kx and you can interpret from there next one the uv radiation is incident on the surface no photoelectrons are emitted if a second beam causes to be ejected that means that should be powerful than uv powerful than uv is either x ray or gamma rays so not infrared not uh, yes x rays is possible not visible light rays not radio waves so x rays is the answer because it has more frequency more energy of the photon next a plane em wave has a frequency travels in a free space in the x at some point at some instant e has its maximum value of 750 in the y the magnitude of the direction of the magnetic field so when e is maximum b is also maximum and you know e by b is equal to c so b max would be again equal to e max by c that is 750 by c which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 so i can write it as 250 into 10 to the power minus 8 or 2.5 micro tesla okay now it because it is traveling in plus x we know e cross b is should be in the direction of this i cap e is j cap so j cap cross something should be i cap so it should be k cap so go for option c that is the appropriate one so again a regular question based on em waves a cuboidal piece of wood has dimension abc its relative density is d it is floating in large body of water such that the side a is vertical okay it is pushed down a bit and released a time period of shm of the wooden pieces here uh, you see let's say this a side was vertical so remaining would be bc and let's say it was in equilibrium like this now it is let's say pushed down by distance x so the extra buoyancy forces and net force and that buoyancy would be the extra volume extra volume would be the area of the surface that is bc into x that multiplied by density of water let's say rho w that is the force with negative sign because it would be upwards and this force is ma and what is ma ma would be the density of the body which is d times rho w into abc that is what i can write the volume 
that multiplied by g here also that into a a i can write it as g2 x by dt2 that is minus bc rho w g x so this bc and rho w goes down so d2 x by dt2 or acceleration you can simply write that is equal to minus uh, what you are left with rho w is gone so no point in writing rho w the only remaining is g and this is da into x so omega comes out as root of g by da that is you can say the time period is 2 pi under root uh, da by g so the option number d is the right one next Young's modulus is defined as the ratio of you know is the ratio of tensile stress and tensile strain so tensile stress and longitudinal strain what you can write it as okay shearing stress shearing strain is shear modulus hydraulic stress hydraulic strain is bulk modulus next if chi is a capped at depth h inside the water of refractive index and viewed outside the diameter of circle through which the outer subject objects become visible be so this is a regular question you have done let's say this is water this is your eye located here at a depth h so you know you can only see up to that theta c limit like this like this this would be like what you say is theta c and here also let's say you make it like this this would be again theta c so what do you have this angle is theta c this is the radius of the circle so diameter you have to find out no issue what do you can write 10 theta c is equal to r by h or you can say d by 2 h that is one and the same thing so 10 theta c what we have sin theta c sin theta c would be equals to 1 upon n okay so 10 theta c i can make it out as 1 upon under root of n square minus 1 that is d by 2 h so d directly you can say is 2 h upon under root of n square or mu square minus 1 whatever you are writing okay so this is 33rd next one the magnification of an image by a convex lens is positive only when the object is placed so it is positive you know when it is the erect image and erect image is formed only when it is placed between pole and focus uh, so we can say for fo force and optical f and optical center that is not the pole the optical center you call it here that is option d we call not at focus not between f and 2f and at 2f next the mi of a disc about diameter is i that is a, uh, you directly know that is equal to mr square by 4 okay now the moment of inertia of disc about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through its rim okay perpendicular to plane and passing through its rim so we know this perpendicular to plane and passing through the center would be mr square by 2 that is 2i and if i shift it like this this is the required one this would be that 2i about cm plus mr square and mr square i can make it out as 4i so it comes out as 6i again this is a question that you must have done somewhere next the mi of a ring about an axis passing through the center and perpendicular to plane its i so this i is mr square here because it is a ring it is rotating with angular speed omega another identical ring is gently placed on it so that the centers coincide if both the rings are rotating about the same axis then the loss in kinetic energies here it is a classical problem of angular momentum conservation you will have i omega would be equal to identical so it becomes 2i into omega dash so omega dash becomes omega by 2 so initial kinetic energy was half i omega square the final kinetic energy would be half instead of i i have 2i but omega becomes omega by 2 whole square so what will become it becomes 1 by 4 of i omega square that is initial by 2 so loss would be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 that is i omega square by 4 so you remember this particular question based on conservation of angular momentum next to get an output y equal to 1 in the given circuit which of the following input is correct so let's try abc let's say 1 0 0 so 1 and 0 1 and this is 1 and 0 it would be 0 so this is rejected so first one is not right now the second one what we have here 1 0 1 okay so this becomes 1 so if this becomes 1 this is 1 and 1 and this will become 1 so definitely it is going to be b option no need to check other because it is coming out as 1 you can check for your wish if you want the current through the two diodes in the figure is okay so first of all let me check this is reverse bias so no current this is forward bias so it will be a wire so the current will only flow through this and this would be because its resistance will be almost be 0 to 5 by 50 that is you can say 1 by 10 ampere 
so 1 by 10 ampere goes through d1 that is 0 0.1 ampere and for 2 that will be 0 so for option b it's an easy one next one the apparent coefficient of volume expansion of a liquid filled in vessel a and b of identical volumes are found to be gamma 1 gamma 2 if alpha 1 b of a then the coefficient of beta will be so what we can say gamma parent is equal to gamma real of liquid minus gamma of container that is what we generally write so what we have so this gamma 1 is the gamma minus 3 alpha 1 gamma 2 is gamma minus 3 alpha 2 so equating gamma from both gamma 1 plus 3 alpha 1 is gamma 2 plus 3 alpha 2 so this alpha 2 comes out as gamma 1 minus gamma 2 by 3 plus alpha 1 that is what I can write so gamma 1 minus gamma 2 by 3 plus alpha 1 so this uh, goes out as uh, this is for me this option is D so this is the question second time being asked and I am not agreeing with the solution they have done for me it should be D though in NTA they have given the option B but I'll go for D next one if EMJG represents energy, mass, angular momentum, gravitational constant respectively then the dimension here uh, if I do dimension of E I told you to remember it ML2 T minus 2 you all remember for the angular momentum this is MVR so this is ML2 T minus 1 and I do this square and then M5 so take it power 5 and G square G you know is FR square by M square so this is ML T minus 2 into L2 upon M2 so it comes out as M minus 1 L3 T minus 2 and this is the square so if I do this and let me check for the mass now above we have 1 plus 2 3 here 5 minus 2 3 so M comes out as 0 okay now length 2 and 4 that is 6 and 3 square 6 so it is also 0 minus 2 minus 4 and this is minus 4 so it is dimensionless go for option D this is a good question you need to be aware of all the dimensions next now the last five in YDSE using monochromatic light of wavelength lambda the intensity of light at a point on the screen where part difference lambda is k units so part difference lambda means that is I max so I max is k then the intensity where the part difference is lambda by 2 that I would be I max that is k cos square 5 by 2 and 5 is 2 pi by lambda into delta x that is lambda by 3 divided by 2 so lambda lambda goes so this is pi by 3 cos square pi by 3 is 1 by 4 so that is k by 4 so you will go for option d here next from Brewster's law except for polished metallic surfaces the polarizing angle you have done this because it depends on mu therefore it depends on wavelength and is different for different colors for sure okay next a pipe of 1 meter length is closed at one end taking the speed of sound in air to be 320 the air column in the pipe cannot resonate okay because it is 1 meter and closed at one end so f would be v by 4l into 2n plus 1 types so that is 2n plus 1 that is a set of resonance frequencies v is 320 by 4l that is 4 so 320 by 4 that is 80 so the possible value is 80 then 240 and then 5 400 and so on so 160 is not possible in this and uh, what we will have 400 and next uh, after that it would be 280 240 400 and then it comes out as 561 okay so 160 is not possible that is going to be the answer next one the phase difference between two points separated by 0.8 meter with a wave of frequency this is this okay so the phase difference between two points is what we say is k delta x which is 2 pi by lambda into delta x so 2 pi by lambda into delta x is 0.8 that is equal to 0.5 pi so pi pi goes so lambda comes out as you can write 16 by 5 you can say so wave velocity is lambda f so 120 into 16 by 5 so it is 24 16 4 is 64 16 2 is 32 32 and 638 384 meter per second so I'll go for option B again a regular question next force x on a body depends on the displacement like this okay the power delivered by f will depend on displacement is power you know is f dot v f v so f is proportional to s k power minus 1 by 3 so first of all power is a force is ma so you can say acceleration I can write it as vdv by ds so that is proportional to s to the power minus 1 by 3 
so VDV is a proportional to S or you can say VDV would be some constant times S to the power minus 1 by 3 ds so if I integrate it what we get V square is K S to the power uh, what we will have 1 by 3 plus 1 that would be uh, minus 1 by 3 plus 1 that is 2 by 3 so V is proportional to S key power 1 by 3 that is what you can make out so f was proportional to s key power minus 1 by 3 this is proportional to s key power 1 by 3 so that means it does not depend on s go for option d so this was today's paper thanks for watching keep sharing the channel thank you once again